It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Houston Texans. And it's coming up next. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Today we've got a fun little clash in the AFC as it'll be the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Houston Texans. Brandon Gunn joined, as always, by Charles Davis. Uh, CD, it's been a tough few years here in Houston. Four, four, and three. Those are their win totals the last three seasons. But in is D'Amico Ryans, as head coach. What do you think he brings to the table? And it's interesting you brought up the number three because D'Amico Ryans is the third head coach in three seasons for this team. What he brings to the table, toughness, organization, and hope. He wanted to be the head coach of the Houston Texans, the team he played for. But meanwhile, the visiting Steelers come into 2023 with something to prove. They finished above 500 at 9-8 and eight last year, but wound up on the outside looking in in terms of the playoff race. And you and I both know how it is around Pittsburgh. Death taxes and the Steelers finish 500 or above. But they want to get beyond that. They want to get back to those days when the Steelers were playing deep into the playoffs for the chance to go to the Super Bowl. And they feel like this team is continuing to get better. And we are underway from NRG Stadium in Houston. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. And a glance here at their quarterback standing six foot three. For every rookie prospect, there are always nerves involved in this moment. Running your team out to start a game. But there's a reason they brought him in. We're willing to make him their starter today. They believe he can overcome those nerves and lead his team to a victory. We saw him do it at the collegiate level and really make himself into a leader and someone you can envision doing the exact same thing here in the NFL. A oh, man coming off a great rookie year. It's Damian Pierce. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And oh, right away, he lost the football. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. Not only a fumble loss there, but a fumble lost on your first drive in your own territory. Now you're dealing with a lot of stuff here because you feel bad going off the field because you gave up the football. How does your own defense feel now having to go out there and stop them when the momentum has clearly shifted in their favor? So the Steelers now in great shape to begin their initial possession. And they will be led out by their signal caller in his second year of the NFL now. And when you watch Kenny Pickett play, you see a young man who got better every season in college and really blossomed in his final campaign, took his game to a new level and made him a first round pick in the NFL. He's a type of kid who can beat you with his mind, beat you with his arm, and occasionally with his legs. A tough, skilled performer. Kenny Pickett, he's got some moxie to him. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Stroud on third down now. To Pierce, they set up the screen. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. That's a nice design there, but sometimes, though, you get so many blockers out ahead of you, they kind of slow you down and force you to adjust. You always appreciate guys trying to help you, but maybe one less there could have turned this into a bigger game. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Here's Austin. Call that a 41-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and ten. 
And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 28-yard line. Back to throw, Pickett, and he's going to be down at the 35, gain of seven. Nothing flashy there, the slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys, because it's a quick play, and you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch, and then he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. Here's second and three. Off play action, pick it. This one hauled in, and again it's Robinson. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. So we just called his name on the previous snap, and they go right back to him, Charles, for a second consecutive completion. Yeah, I think what we're discovering on this drive is that he feels like he has answers no matter what defense you throw up there. He reads it, finds the open spot, and is available for the completion. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 45-yard line. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Not a great start dropping his first target, but let's face it, it won't be his last chance because he'll get opportunities to make up for that one throughout this game. Here's second and 10. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. You got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. So back to back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and 10. Now pick it. Pass complete, George Pickens with it. And he can only manage to take the football to the 40, and that is well shy of the first down marker. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be fourth down. Receivers love having the reputation of being go-to guys on third down, and he was fighting like he really wanted to have that reputation, didn't he? I mean, he came very close to making that a first down. Broke the one tackle, but... and they're gonna fake it. He wants to throw it here. This one will not work out. It is incomplete. It would have been a long field goal. The fake doesn't work out. And this Texans defense stands tall. Well, that was a long attempt to begin with, so the fake you might have known was somewhat of a possibility. Credit to the defense, though. They weren't fooled. You're right. They weren't fooled. And they were in a position of having to play it both ways. Guard for the fake, but you still want to rush the kicker yeah, because it was a makeable kick. So they ended up getting the best out of the whole thing. Stumped the fake, and they take over the ball. Meanwhile, Stroud's throw pulled in by Woods. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Second down and four. Now Stroud. Another targeting catch for Robert Woods. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. A shotgun snap to Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. On second down, here's Pierce. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Now the 
throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. The Texans send the punter out as he'll punt it away for the second time. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. Now the third-year man, Najee Harris. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards. It moves the sticks. Now that's how you start a drive. Not only do you pick up a first down, you do it on a chunk play. Big yardage. And now you put a little bit of a dent in the confidence of the defense. First and 10, here's Pickett. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Pickett back to throw. And swung out wide to Harris. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Off the play fake. Here's Pickett. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. Now he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. That third down conversion, good for 23. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 32-yard line. A run with Harris out of the shotgun, and he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's the second down and six. Looking to throw, pick it. A short one there to Fireview. And they'll get this down to the 10. 18 yards on his first catch of the game. It's a first down. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball. How much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he's going to ball his way down to about the one-yard line. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Pickett looking to throw on second down. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, that play there was certainly a scouting report special because Cupboard was all too aware that this close to the end zone, he's going to become a bigger weapon for that offense. And they were there to help force the incompletion. They were held out last time. Here now is third and goal from the one. Harris. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Everybody in the stadium knew what they were going to do right there, CD. Three tight ends on the field, all that extra bulk, and they run it in. And you saw where that one went, right? 
You run it over your best blocker. I can just see the head coach right now. I want to run this one over the big boy. And they got it done. Boswell good with the extra point. And that makes the score 7-0. That time, a nine-play drive. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he returns this to the 22. Now comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. We'll see if they can do better here on this drive. Start on the ground with Pierce. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards. And it's second and two. They run with the former Buffalo Bill, Devin Singletary. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. They need two. Here's third down. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it, and that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. The Texans send the punter out as he'll come on to kick this one away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. A 40-yard punt, no return. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. Pick it a look to throw it here. Throw left side, going to be taken in by Harris. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that's going to bring up second down. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup with someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. This defense, tough to run against. And those linebackers, they'll go side to side up the field, and there they get them for no gain. If you can't get linemen upfield to the second level to occupy them, they have a field day just running to the football and putting ball carriers on the ground. Not many yards after contact when they wrap up like that. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. My dad used to tell me all the time when you're going ready to play a big-time game, especially when you have one going into a dome setting, better strap it up tight because that crowd can really affect things. Especially on third downs like the one we just saw there with the incompletion. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Houston set to take over. 
So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. Stroud sets up the play action. Swings this one out wide for Pierce. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. That's a nice job defensively to make sure everyone was accounted for because ordinarily you pick up the guys downfield and sometimes you forget about the running back. In this case, they did not and dropped him for no gain. Stroud now on second down. That's off the mark, incomplete. I tell you what, that's a veteran play from a guy in his first season in the NFL. A lot of rookies are trying to force something there. He thought better of it, and that was the right decision. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. From the gun on third down, here's Stroud. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it, and they're all the 18-yard line is where they take over. This defense, Charles, very opportunistic here early. A second fumble recovery in this first quarter of play. Yeah, you mentioned the right word, opportunistic and aggressive, because once they got the first fumble recovery, they were eager to get a second one, and sometimes they just come in bunches. On the flip side, they've got to figure out how to hold the ball because the play calls seem to be okay. They're just not executing. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Following the fumble recovery, pick it over the middle complete. It's Robinson. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. Brings up second and three at the 12-yard line. Here's Pickett. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. Trying with Pickett here on third down. zone touchdown Steelers Miles Boykin a 12-yard touchdown grab and the Steelers have taken a 13 to nothing first quarter lead and partner they found a gap there on the post pattern and it was in the middle third of the field and that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening but they found the opening and exploited it Extra point put through by Boswell, and it's now 14 to nothing. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's Miles Boykin who caps it with a touchdown reception. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. The Texans getting set here to take over again on offense. They find themselves in a good size hole here, in a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down.
Back to throw. Here's Stroud. And he finds his target at Schultz. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. A big pickup of 38. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. First and 10, it's Pierce. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game, maybe establish the run? I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Fourteen nothing the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from Houston. It's the Texans in possession of the football. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. And Stroud now to throw. Looking to shot for once, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick. And the Steelers are going to take possession here as they've got it at their own four-yard line. The rookie was trying to push it downfield, but the safety bit him. And he'll learn that you have to hold the safety. And you do that with your head movement, your eyes, sometimes your shoulders. Hold the safety so that you can get back to the throw that you really want to make. He got so excited thinking his guy was open that he made it easy for the defensive back to go get the football. They turn to Harris to begin the drive. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And that run there does nothing but juice up the guys who are moving the football. I mean, if you're an offensive lineman, people running it, actually the guy calling plays, you're almost jumping up and down in jubilation, aren't you? Yeah, now you've got options on second down. And big time options. You might want to think about play action and try and get something cheap right here over the top. Now a throw here to his running back. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Harris running straight ahead. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Shaquille Griffin in on the stop defensively. This defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still want to move at a nice pace. Harris going to get it again on second down. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. And the Steelers on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and seven. Pick it. complete and he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds that'll put him at 66 receiving yards now for the game and he's got a first down two minutes gone by second quarter
To the air on first down with Pickett. Here's a diving catch right side. 23 yards, the final tally. I felt that one all the way up here. How about that big man laying out and making that catch? Yeah, that wasn't a 180-pound wideout. That was a tight end. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 45-yard line. They hand this off to Harris and trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That's a play to take note of there for the defense. I think in the future, if you're going to try and block him, maybe you get a guard to help double-team him and try and steer him out of the play. They should have done it on that snap. Here's Pickett on second down. Got an open man. It's Pickens. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 34-yard line. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Pickett sets up play action. Middle of the field, it's Robinson. And that's good for a gain of six, and it's second down. Now pick it. Slant route, and he's got Fryer move. And they'll get him down inside the red zone at the 14. It's also a gain of 14. First down. Pickett going to bootleg it. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And in for the Steelers. Touchdown. Connor Hayward. A 14-yard touchdown. And the Steelers go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. So they get their tight end away from the line to the outside, and he works his way in for six. Tight ends are not just blockers anymore. I don't know how many more times we need examples, but here's a great one. Gets to the outside, they give him the ball pretty quickly, and they trust him to get those extra yards, and boy, did he come through pulling his way into the end zone after the nice catch. Boswell good with the extra point, and it's now 21 to nothing. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Taken at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Texans back out there and ready to go. Well, CD, you kind of feel like they're in a bit of a danger zone right here because now you're down three scores, and I know we're in the first half, but... The way this offense hasn't been able to generate anything, you feel like they probably need to get something going on this drive, right? Yeah, and sometimes I overuse that this is an important possession, but I think this has to be the possession where they come up with an answer because only a few teams in league history have ever come back from a four-score deficit. And if they don't score here, that's what they could be facing the next time they get the ball. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. Pierce with a motivated run there, and no surprise he's motivated this season after a late injury robbed him of a 1,000-yard campaign last year and potentially the rookie of the year. Even still, the fourth-round pick outplayed his slot with over 900 yards in 13 games. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. 42 yards rushing for him now in the ballgame. 
And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. The second down throw now from Stroud. A quick throw there is incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Now here's Stroud on third down. Oh, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. The Texans send the punter out as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. Kenny Pickett in the Pittsburgh offense set to go to work once again. The returns on the last drive, pretty good. Seven for seven, touchdown pass. Probably take that, right? I would say so. I mean, when you're cutting them apart that way, feeling so accurate, so confident going downfield, and then able to culminate by putting it in the end zone. Oh, yeah. He's feeling real good right now. Now he'll try to carry that over. To Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Denzel Perryman with a sack. Well, that's what they have to do more of defensively, not just getting sacks. We have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18 on the give. This is Harris. Now the ball comes loose. Oh, and this one him may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. A call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now our ball. I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill, but the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. On fourth down, here's Presley Harvin on to punt. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. Yeah, call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Texans will take over. And now out comes Houston. And this, you'd hate to say that a drive in the first half must end in points, but you're down 21-0. They're going to have to get something going fairly quickly. I would agree totally with that because if you're going to mount the comeback, it's going to have to come in bits and pieces. It doesn't just all come at one time, right? We haven't seen anything more than a six-point touchdown ever in this game, right? So that's how it has to be done. Get points on the board now. Start your comeback. But you're exactly right. Let's get it going right here in this spot. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. A shotgun snap to Stroud. That's to the sideline and incomplete. Woods the intended receiver, and it's third down. Brings up on third down and ten yards to go. Stroud on third down now. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. 
Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 38. A give up the middle to Singletary. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice game there. This one goes for 20. What we saw there, that's what we know that he can do. He can break tackles and turn them into big runs, and that's what he did. And what is the buzz phrase nowadays in football for a guy like that? Contact balance. The ability to go through trash, come out the other side, avoid and run through contact, and keep your balance. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Well, this defense is going to have to finish the job. There's still a second half that they have to play. But so far, an absolute total effort. They've disrupted the passing game, stressed the pocket for the quarterback. They forced him into errant throws. Everything they're doing has been executed well. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. They'll get to him just inside the 15-yard line. And even after that fancy footwork, we saw a good job defensively to recover. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The Texans on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. This will be third and five. To Pierce, they set up the screen. Touchdown, Texans! Damian Pierce from 13 yards out. And the Texans are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. That pass also evens the ledger for the rookie quarterback. Had the interception earlier, and now he gets the touchdown throw. The ideal touchdown to interception ratio is what? Three to one for the best quarterbacks? But he's a rookie. Just getting back to even is a big deal. Increases the confidence his teammates have in him as he tries to become their leader. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and they'll cut the lead to 21-7. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 22. Harris will start the drive out. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. What a way to start a drive. An excellent run, a tone setter. And now, if you want to take a shot on second down and go play action, make it look like the same exact play and throw it over the top, you can do so because you've established the run in a big way. Second down, here's Pickett. He's got this to Pickens. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. That one covers 29 yards, first down. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big time play right there. And a little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Brought down on the play by the linebacker, Christian Harris. Here now, second and nine from the 39-yard line. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Harris. And he'll get four here down to the 35-yard line. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. 
Looking to throw. Pick it. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. I feel like my man, old Mo, momentum might be changing jerseys right now. How about what they just got done? They scored a touchdown in their last drive. Now here's a three and out. Maybe momentum's getting ready to creep to the other sideline. And the former Rice, Al Boswell, puts this one through in his return to Houston. And they will open things up a bit more. It's 24 to 7. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right, baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. For the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back on the field here. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn it into a play action, and throw one deep. And they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. Now a quick throw there, but it's gonna be incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Second and 10, here's Stroud. Finds his man, it's John Mechie. And he's gonna get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Now they gotta get to the line quickly. Stroud to throw it. That's underneath to Pierce. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. The Texans send the punter out as he's on for the fifth time here today. Fair catch called for and made at about the 32-yard line. It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, no return. And they will take over first and 10. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Here's Pickett. Completes this one to Pickens. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Any questions of how they'd approach this drive were answered right there. They come out throwing, and they get a nice pick up here toward the end of the first half. Pick it now on first down. Man open is Robinson. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. It's another first down on what will be a gain of 21 yards. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? Pick it to throw on first down. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. 
Yeah, offenses always try to be smart about when they're trying to dial up a screen to the running back because they understand you can only go to the well so many times in a game without the defense starting to anticipate the call. So now they'll come up on second and 10 once again from the 28. Back to throw, pick it. Oh, he rifles one and that's going to be intercepted. And the Texans are going to take possession here at their own 16-yard line. So really the first speed bump that this offense has encountered. They've had the rule of the roost here in this first half, but now slowed up just a bit by the interception. And there's a chance that that's a wake-up call for them because you don't want to go on autopilot too early. That team on defense is capable of making some plays similar to the one they made right there. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And with only nine seconds remaining, with well, not much time, we'll see how they play this. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards, so make it second and five. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Steelers out in front. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports halftime report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment, but welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We got a fine first half out of the former Alabama man, Najee Harris. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. So time for the second half as the Steelers have the lead and they will also be receiving the football here to start the third quarter. This fielded right at the goal line. And he will make it back to the 15 and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. The Steeler offense ready to get going to begin this third quarter. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 15. Harris starts the drive on the ground. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. If this defense wants to stay in this ball game, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do. And right now with that lead, that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try and make some plays in their backfield. Pickett looking to throw on second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. Pick it back to throw. And he's going to go down right near the goal line. The officials look at each other. They're going to mark him at the one yard line. Jonathan Greenard running in to pick up the sack. To me, the defense was looking a little gas near the end of the first half, but they've come out of the locker room with a little extra spring in their step. Wonder what they did at halftime to get them so motivated. I don't know, but that sack looked good. Now let's see if they can build on the momentum of that play. The Steelers send out their punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he's able to get it out quickly, and this is not a bad kick here. It's a return of four following a 42-yard punt. And the Texans with great field position to start this drive as they take over first and ten. Up, 
Hand off left side, Pierce. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Ball on the 39, here's second and a couple. Stroud now on second down. Quick slam here to Woods. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Pierce takes it straight ahead. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Play action. Stroud now. Got a man. It's Collins complete. Seven yards there and a first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Stroud to the air on first and ten. This is caught. It's Woods. Touchdown. Robert Woods from 19 yards away. And the Texans are able to cut into that deficit. So a very important first drive of the third quarter, Charles, and safe to say, a much needed touchdown. Which leads to the question, where was this in the first half? Because if they'd had a few more drives like that, they wouldn't be in this situation. But that is the kind of drive that sends a message to the other side. We're gonna be here and we're gonna battle you to the end. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And the lead down to 10, Touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Pittsburgh offense making their way back out. This now a 10-point game, so things tightening a little bit after that last score. Pickett leads his Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 22. Pickett. Pass incomplete. Second and 10. Now pick it. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. That incompletion certainly makes this upcoming third down a little bit more crucial. They need to find the right play to convert here and maybe start to tamp down a little bit of the momentum. The other side is starting the game. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. Complete. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45 yard line. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards to play. And that's a good job there, knuckling down as an offense. You're trying to avoid three and out at all costs. And after two straight incompletions, this one's on target, and they're able to keep the chains moving. Off 
play action. Pick it. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Off the play fake, here's Pickett. Dancing to his left. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. They'll give him eight on the play, and that's going to lead to a third down. The defense did its job of taking away a quick throw, but that's only half the battle because they've got to get to him before he can make a run for it. A little bit late containing him there, so he makes a nice gain out of a play that looked like it was in trouble. Third and two, Pickett. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 33. 15 yards there on the catch and run. I like the call on third and two. They were geared up to stop the run. I like the fact they just hit him quick. A little slant route. All about timing there, partner. Yeah, the timing, everything well executed. Pickett sets up play action. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. Will Anderson just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. Remember, they had the nice gain on the previous play, but they just gave a lot of it back right there on that sack. Yeah, they get the sack, get back some real estate. Felt like the type of play that can spark a defense and swing some momentum. Almost felt like it take that type of a play, didn't it, Parker? They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Pick it a look to throw it here. And this is going to be incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. And this defense definitely in his head there on third down, and he's pretty fortunate. They didn't call for grounding on this one. That was a good 10 feet over everyone's head. anything beyond 50 you start rolling the dice a bit and once you get up around 57 58 yards the chances of making it go down dramatically and sure enough this one winds up no good now the Texans offense they head back out to do battle here this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense they were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field and frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated, they both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Stroud's throw pulled in by Woods. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Option right, here's Stroud. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. And that one will go for 13 yards on the keeper. And a first down. Well, with him trailing here in the second half, maybe his legs can try to give this offense a spark. And that's the benefit of having a young quarterback, right? Having a rookie, a guy who will say, hold on a second, I have a little bit of fearlessness to my game. It isn't working as well the other way. Let's see what I can do to help my team this way. And boy, he did it there. There on the tackle, Minka Fitzpatrick. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps them advancing the ball. Here's second and five now from the 22. On second down, it's Stroud. And he's got his big tight end over the middle, complete. And they got it inside the 10 at the 8. He's up to 88 yards receiving in the ball game now, and he's got a first down. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink. 
think it. Understands the catch radius, understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball, and puts it right out there for the nice pickup. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll run here with Pierce. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. Once more, it's Pierce. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. 69 yards rushing for him now to this point. Well, sometimes I get caught in hyperbole, but I think they desperately need to punch this one in. They're running out of time. Yeah, two score games, second half, you're down here. This is the time to put it in the end zone. And not gonna get much better than this for an opportunity. Third and goal, Stroud. zip on that pass and baseball might have called that a frozen rope i like it when you bring the diamond into the game i'm going back to the gridiron had some heat on that bad boy sometimes you throw a touchdown pass and sometimes you throw what a touchdown strike there you go that's my man in concert fairbairn good with the extra point and that cuts the lead to three 24 21. Touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. Back out onto the field comes Allen Robinson. They have to like what they've gotten from him in this game. Think about the accumulation of catches. Eight. The yards per catch now, because you're getting more than a first down every time he's touching the ball. This is the kind of game you want when you're able to throw it out wide. Absolutely. Over 100 yards, has the eight catches. Pickett leads his Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs. At their own 16. Looking to throw. Pickett. It's caught on the right side by Robinson. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. 25 yards that time. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Picking now to throw off the play fake. Escaping the pressure right. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Brandon, once that one broke down, there were only so many options left for him to take. Fortunately, only first down. So he smartly got the yardage he could get and didn't worry about trying to turn it into a bigger play and end up taking a bigger loss. Here, they hope they can regroup and get something different going here on second down. On second down, this is Harris. And he stopped immediately there. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for him. He's already fumbled once in this game, and I thought the ball started to jostle there a little bit, but they got to him quickly at the line of scrimmage. It sure did, and remember, if you're not a very confident runner and you've already dropped it once, if there's traffic around you, the only thing you think about is protecting the football, not gaining yards. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Oh, nice defensive effort there, providing the hit as the ball got to the receiver, separates him from the catch, and normal is a sure-handed target. The Steelers send out their punter now, as he's on here to punt it away.
Taking it about the 16. A 39-yard punt, a return of five. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. I'm guessing you wouldn't have minded being a fly on the wall at halftime because they were struggling in that first half. Down double digits. Now they're right back in this thing. So whatever was said apparently worked. And let's make sure if we're going to be a fly on the wall that we're high up on the wall because <laughs> I know I always talk about it being clinical at the half, you know, less emotion, more execution. But every now and then, this is an emotional game. Sure. Someone's got to come in and stir some things up and... I wouldn't be surprised if maybe a few benches got overturned and the halftime water ended up hitting the floor. Well, whatever happened, it's working right now. And on the stop, Demonte Casey. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, and you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. The second down throw now from Stroud. This ball caught by Mechie. And he gets us to the other side of midfield across the 35 before going out. Give him 32 on the play. We have seen big plays from both quarterbacks throughout this game, and there's another one right there. Going back and forth, almost like two excellent guitar soloists trying to top each other with each additional play. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Now Stroud. A quick throw there is incomplete. Oh, they'll certainly be on the tablets going over that one for sure. Clearly they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Second and ten. Here's Stroud. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. John Mechie was his intended target, and it's third down. The throwing again is Stroud. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 25-yard line. He has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. As they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Houston. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. It's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. On second down, here's Pierce. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Defensively, we always know that he is tough at run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. On third down, here's Pierce. And he is going to lose yardage here. This defense not budging back-to-back -back carries of just two yards. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run it until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. So a big one coming here for Kaimi Fairbear. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. The kick by Fairbear is good. This game is tied. I tell you, the life of a kid.
kicker. He has not been called on the entire game. He's over there by the net, but they send him out here in the fourth quarter and say, hey, go tie the game, will you? And guess what? He comes through. I just don't know how they do it. I really don't. These cats are a different breed from you and me. That's a pressure kick, but that one was never in doubt. This one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. And he returns this to the 22. Now the Steelers offense gets ready to get back onto the field. And we essentially have a brand new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 22. A handoff to Harris to begin the drive. And oh, he sheds a tackle. Now he's got some space. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now that's a run that warms a play caller's heart because you're actually set up to do whatever you want on offense. You come right back and run essentially the same play because you have momentum or you can fake that running play and throw something deep over the top, or you now feel like you have an extra down to play with because if you go ahead and just throw it and you don't get it, come back and try and pick it up on third down. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. I didn't like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there, tried to force it in. That one he's fortunate just fell incomplete. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Here's Pickett. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's four. He's just not at his focus in this game. It's not one drop. It's not two. That's three for this contest. Yeah, uncharacteristic for any NFL receiver, and he's no exception. The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Stroud out of the gun here. They'll complete this one to Collins. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 and a first down. Give left side for Pierce. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Defense able to get there. Swarm to the football. Zilch, zero, nada there for the offense, Charles. Yeah, it really was an example of good team defense, wasn't it? Everyone handled their responsibilities, and they held them to no gain. Stroud now on second down. A uh, short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Pierce will try to pick it up. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. A strong eight yards will keep this drive rolling. 
Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. And they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. His throw incomplete. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. Was this game announced as a night game prior to, and maybe his rhythm confused. is just off? I he's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. Pierce now up the middle. Breaks a tackle. And he'll get this pretty close to a first down as he's tackled at the Steelers' 24. 87 yards on the ground for him so far. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. They'll try to run for this with Singletary. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. Four yards on the pickup, good enough to extend the drive. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. First and 10, it's Pierce. And he's swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? Now here's Stroud on third down. That is caught, and the Texans are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. I'd love to sit down at some point in our offseason and talk to these defensive coordinators in the red zone. Tight end is obviously a big threat, yet these guys continue to make plays. Is there any other way to stop them? Apparently not. In the red zone, like you said, that's your guy. They got it to him. Supreme confidence in going to a playmaker. Singletary. It's going to go backwards. He'll lose yardage back to the five. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Well, let's face it, that's just a helpless feeling for a running back there. He's looking up to find a hole, and all he finds is a whole lot of ticked-off linebacker. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. Uh, give to Pierce. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Andrew Beck punching it in from a yard. And the Texans have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead here in the fourth. So what a comeback here. They looked like they might be down and out not too long ago, but they have rallied back to take a fourth quarter lead. And I think we've got to give them nothing but credit for figuring things out on the fly because mentally they were on the ropes ready to go and they hung in there and made some changes and adjustments and that led to some big plays and it turned this game on its ear. Touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And 
And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And now they'll look to answer working from behind. And remember, this offense has sputtered yet to score here in the second half. They'll need to change that here. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 19-yard line. Pickens going in motion left. Now they fake the jet sweep there and a run instead with Harris. And a really good show of force there as he gets through for four tough yards. Well, that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. Second and six. They'll keep it on the ground. Harris again. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. Third and one, gut check time on both sides. Pick it, he'll look to throw it. Well, they would have gotten the conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder, you think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and here comes the Texans now. Right now, clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays that are going to gain yardage, how would you say it, consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs, and the goal... End the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. 108 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Six yards, the pickup, and that's a first down. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. They go again with Pierce. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Second and 12, and you'd have to assume another all-out effort to stop the run is coming. Hand off left side, Pierce. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Now the Steelers going to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. No 
We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. Going for it with Pierce. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to perhaps salt this one away. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So that one's CD going to make the road back a lot more difficult. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know they were praying on the other sideline for a miss because now, as you pointed out, a very difficult road. Down two scores. You don't just need a touchdown. You need a chain of events to go your way. You've got to score, somehow get the ball back, and score again. The odds of that happening, not great in your favor. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This taken in right around the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. So here's Pickett and the Steelers. Down by 10, a little under a minute to go. It's an extremely tall order in front of them, but they've got the ball with a first down. Looking to throw here, pick it. That's to fire me. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's gonna be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. They'll come up first and ten here. Pick it to throw. That's down the field and caught by Fryermuth. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Well, from an offense's perspective, that sure was pretty because the corner route is extremely difficult to defend from my perspective. What we just saw there, is that sort of the evolution of the tight end position? Yeah, I think it is because more and more, tight ends are being treated like wide receivers. These are some agile players who can make a play in any spot on the field. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Passing lanes tough to come by with so many defensive backs on the field here late in the game. And it's not just the number of bodies, it's their quickness and their agility that makes it tough to complete a pass. One final shot for Pickett. One last shot at the end zone. And that will be incomplete. They were going for a consolation TD, but it was not to be. And time has run out now on this game. Well, somebody lit a fire under that offense during the break, Charles. Remember, they trailed at intermission. They come out, they have the big second half, and that lifts them to the victory. And Brandon, trailing at halftime, we always talk about teams making adjustments. You know what the best adjustments usually are? It's just executing better. Because the game plan you put in place at the beginning of the week often still hold.